Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Newsor Education. Um, we continue solving math problems. It's part of the course Math Plus and Problems presented on Unizor.com. Um, the same website, Unizor.com, also has the prerequisite course which is called Math for Teens. It has also physics, relativity, some other courses. So I do suggest you to watch this lecture from the website. Uh, not only because you have this prerequisite and other courses, but also every lecture is presented on Unizor.com together with its textual equivalent, because it, it, it's like a textbook basically. So you have a presentation uh, as a video, and the same uh, uh, educational material is presented as a text. So it's very important to do both actually uh, in either sequence. However, when we are talking about the problems, it makes a lot of sense to read the problems first on the textual part uh, of the website. Try to solve the problem yourself without looking into solution, and solution is provided in the textual part in many cases, not in all cases. And only then, uh, watch the lecture. What's very important again is to do it yourself first. Solving problems is exercise for your brain and that's the purpose of the whole course actually. So um, you might come up with a different solution, you might come up yourself with uh, well maybe no solution, maybe you don't know how to solve the problem. That's okay as long as you are spending time to think about this problem. Thinking is exercise for your brain and that's the most important part of it. Now uh, today's lecture is called Geometry Number 10. Uh, it's actually a continuation of Number 9, the previous lecture. I will very, very briefly um, repeat what was going on uh, in the previous lecture. It's all about construction in geometry using only the straight line ruler without the compass. Traditionally, classical geometrical problem on construction are solved with two tools, straight line uh, ruler and the compass. Now, these exercises for your brain basically is, okay, let's say you have only one tool, only straight line ruler. How to use this to accomplish something which is presented as a problem? So, in the previous lecture, I have proven a very important theorem. If you have two parallel lines, and you have one particular segment, AB, on one of them. You connect from any point M you have these two. Then you do the diagonals. A, C, D, B is actually a trapezoid. So you have two diagonals then this line going through the intersection of diagonals of this trapezoid uh, breaks P, Q, N breaks in halves both C, D and A, B that was a theorem which I have proven in the previous lecture and you can obviously uh, take a look at this you go to unizor.com, Math uh, Plus and Problems course, choose Geometry, and then Geometry number 9, that's the previous one. Okay, so this is the theorem, and based on this theorem, we have come up with a way how to divide uh, a segment AB, in case you have another parallel line, how to divide it in half. Well, how? Well, that's basically exactly how I draw this picture. You pick a point, you draw these two lines, MA and MB, in the trapezoid ACDB you do two diagonals and connect M with the crossing of uh, diagonals Q and you will get two midpoints, P is middle point of CD and N is midpoint of AB. So that's the construction and we are using only straight lines no compass involved, right? Only lines, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we know how to divide um, a segment 
if it's positioned on one of two parallel lines, we know how to divide it in, in half. Okay, now the next problem, and again it was actually presented in the previous lecture, was how to double the size of, we have half the size of the segment. Now I'm asking how to double the size. Well, it's again the same thing, just slightly different. Um, what you do is, let me write another, draw another thing. So you have two parallel lines, and you have this AB to double the size. So what I'm suggesting is the following. Choose any segment on another parallel line. Divide it in half, and we know how to divide it in half already, right? So we are not talking about this. Now, if you will connect this and this, and then this, this B prime would be double. It's exactly the same picture. I just reversed it a little bit. So my AB should fall into the half of the CD. Then the whole CD would be here. And again, it's very easy to prove. Well, um, if you wish, I can just repeat the proof. It's very easy here. It's uh, M, that would be probably P, and that would be N, right? Something like this. So C and M triangle is obviously similar to AB M because these lines are parallel, which means all angles are equal. Which means CN to AB is like MN to MB. Sides of the similar triangles are similar, uh, are proportional, right? So these two small sides are proportional to big size. Same thing on this triangle. So you have ND to B, B prime as, well, the same two sides, because the same side is shared between these two triangles. So it will be MN to MB. So this is MN to MB, this is MN to MB, which means that this is this. Since CN and ND are equal to each other, because if you remember, we took a big CD and divided it in half, knowing how to do it from the previous problem. So from this equal to this follows that BB prime and AB are e of equal length. So that means we double the size. So that was kind of a, a quick recap of whatever was in the previous lecture. Now in this lecture we will continue doing this and it's very very easy extension. Again I will use whatever we have already done in the previous lecture and I will use it to accomplish two more um, uh, uh, things to, to basically to solve how to um, multiply the lengths by any number n and how to divide by n parts uh, a segment and again we do have two parallel lines and this is why my AB question is how to increase the length of AB by any uh, um, natural number n we know how to double it which means we know how to multiply it by 2 Okay, so we know that. What if I want to multiply this by 3? Well, obviously the thing is very simple. Instead of multiplying it by 3, you multiply B, B prime by 2. And you will have B, B, 2 primes. Okay? Now, A, B, 2 primes is basically triple A, B. Now, if you want to multiply it by 4, what you do? Well, again, you multiply b, b prime b second by 2, uh, and you will have b3, which is exactly ab3, which is exactly 4 times ab. So they basically, 
we are not talking about how difficult it is or whatever it is. It's only the principle. Is there an algorithm which can allow you to multiply the length of this particular segment to, 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 to find a, a, a point on the same line which uh, makes a, a total segment n times bigger than original. So all you do is repeat the same procedure whatever number of times. You repeat it once, you get double. You repeat it twice, you will get triple. You repeat it n uh, minus one times, and you will get n times longer uh, segment than before. That's it. The problem is solved. Again, it's just the principle which is important. Now, the second part. The second part is divided in n parts. Again, it's kind of similar to whenever we were, we were dividing um, into how it is. But I, I have to make a b one nth of something else, right? So let's just scratch this. We will have another segment. <coughs> well, let's make it smaller. Any segment, and we know how to multiply this segment by n. How to make a longer segment dn, let's say, which is n times longer than what we, what we have. Okay? Okay, so what do I do next? Well, if I want to divide by n pieces, I will connect this to this, and this to this. And this is crossing point. Well, in theory, it can happen that they are not intersecting these two lines. They are parallel. Then just choose different uh, segments, CD, a little longer, a little shorter and then it will not be parallel. So let's just drop that uh, uh, circumstances. Now, what's next? Well, next is I have this divided into this is G1, this is G2, this is G3, this is G4, this is G whatever. So we had original CD and then we multiply its length by number N. So all I need to do is connect each D point with M and for obvious reason since these are equal in length these will be equal in length for exactly the same purpose uh, for exactly the same reason as when I divided in, 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 in two uh, I was considering the similarity of triangles each pair of triangles like C, D1, M and A, A1, M are similar because of the parallelism of these lines, so angles are equal, which means that C, D1 to A, D, uh, A, B1, A, A1, whatever. A, A1. as uh, D1M to A1M. But then the next one, DD2M. So D1D2 to, this would be A2 then, right? To A1, A2. I will use the line which is the side which is shared between these and these. So it would be the same D1M to A1M. So these sides are the same, which means these are should be the same. And since CD1 and DD and D1, D2 are equal, this is equal to this, as we have basically constructed them. From this follows that these two are equal. 
So a a1 is equal to a1 a2. And then the same thing many times after that. Well, as you see, these are all simple things. And what's important, we never use the compass. We did everything using the um, straight line ruler. What helped us, obviously, the parallelism of these two lines. I cannot do the same thing without the second line, which I know is parallel. That's very important. So I need that trapezoid, or whatever it is, uh, to, to construct, basically, the main thing. So, but that's the problem. I mean, the problem has certain, you know, conditions, and condition is you have these two parallel lines. There are many other problems of the similar kind of thing. So you have to really think outside the box, uh, not what you have basically learned in, in the classical, so to speak, course of, in this case, geometry, when you have, uh, you have the way how you divide any segment, let's say, in two. Usually, the, the way to do it with a compass, you do some radius here, radius here, radius here, radius here, the same radius, and then you divide by this, and obviously it's very easy to prove that these are equal pieces. That's kind of a way how it's taught on a regular um, uh, lesson in, in, in regular schools. Without using the compass, it's already a little bit tricky, and you have to think about it. But that's the purpose, to force you to think. <laughs> okay, so this is basically all I wanted to talk about these segments and parallel lines and how to divide or multiply them uh, by any factor. Uh, so, I do suggest you to read the notes for this particular lecture, so you go to unizor.com, choose Math Plus and Problems course, and uh, Geometry as a category, and this will be lecture number 10. Okay, that's it for today, thank you very much, and good luck.